Hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and as you can see, we moving on up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me get not in the picture, okay? As you can see, we're moving up. We got some new equipment in the studio. So for those of you guys who have been watching the show and you're wondering, who is that deep voice in the background, besides mine anyway? I'll take it was, care. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was Donovan. And so now... You're going to be able to see us both, um, and you can see me elbow him every now and again or whatever, um, because like I said, uh, he's got um, new equipment that allows both of us to be on here. And so, um, to those of you guys on the podcast, and uh, eventually YouTube, and um, all the podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, thank you guys so much, and especially my Facebook audience for being here, especially today on I'm going to say it one time or so Super Bowl Sunday, where I know a lot of people are going to be um, watching the Super Bowl. But as you can see, me and Donovan are not watching or Donovan and I yes. are not watching the Super Bowl. We are here with you. And I would like to just Supporting say, cap. yeah, kudos <laughs> to you, because I know you are a diehard football yes, fan. Yeah. But Donovan says, I'm not going to do it. And so right. uh, big ups to him and big ups to anybody else on here, too, who um would ordinarily be watching the Super Bowl, but you decided to abstain because you are uh, riding in solidarity with Kaepernick. For those of you guys don't know, lived under a rock. Kaepernick started off a protest in 2016, I believe it was, Mm -hmm. 17, 16, um, by kneeling um, to bring awareness to police brutality and the murder of innocent black people by the hands of the police. And so uh, for the guys who don't know, also he was blackballed. And is being blackballed from football. And yeah. so those of us in who are prime. in his prime, I mean, he was what, like 30? He maybe? wasn't even 30. Yeah, he was maybe 31. But he's 30 now, right. I think. And so he's been blackballed. And so we're standing in solidarity with um, Kaepernick and not participating in not just the Super Bowl, but football in general. At least we are. So big ups to you guys. And so I decided instead of um, talking about the Super Bowl to call this show Super Black Sunday <laughs> 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 to kind of hijack uh, the narrative. Of um, you know the, the the football game or whatever, and so I want to go ahead and get started. And always, I like to say, um, as always, thank you to Donovan and thank you to Marcus Guyton for yes. um doing everything he does in spreading the message so that more people can watch. And today, I'm not really for sure how long we'll be on here because, like I said, I mean people are doing other stuff, and that's just the the way it works. And so, and uh, don't mm-hmm. and don't forget, uh, thanks to Alex. Oh, yes, music, and, yeah, and uh, thanks to Alex, too. He um, actually provides The theme us, songs. Yes, his theme songs, his original music uh, for the production of the YouTube videos. And so a big thank you to Alex Jones for doing that. And so I want to go ahead and get started. Um, so the title of the show, uh, for those of you guys who didn't see it, is um, The Awakening of a Sleeping Black Giant. And also the purpose of the Demetri K show is to promote black love, knowledge and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people. OK, and so today's topic, as I said, is the awakening of a sleeping black giant. Now, bear with me here. OK, um, after slavery, when black people were set free, we had nothing and almost no one to help us. We were on our own for a lack of better words. So we unified in order to build strong, viable communities, and we did just that. We built all types of businesses like grocery stores, hospitals, schools, and everything in between for a lack of better words. We were self-reliant. All right? We were awake. Okay? And then innate um, evilness reared its ugly head. White supremacy destroyed what our ancestors worked so hard to build. Okay, after the start market stock market crash of 1929, the Great Depression happened. Most Americans suffered during the Great Depression, but no one suffered more than black people. Now, that come and then comes uh, FDR and the New Deal, which was a program that provided economic relief as a remedy to the devastation of the Great Depression. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the president back then, um, was running, well, he wasn't really the president then, he was actually running against Hoover, um, was um, running for president. He knew that um, he needed black people to win. Remember, um, FDR was a Democrat, and with that being said, most black people in the 1930s were Republicans. Now, 
Under the New Deal, FDR reluctantly catered to black people at the request of his wife because his wife was like, yo, you know, you need black people. And she was more on the, um, I can't say this, I guess the liberal side and the um, progressive side. I would say more of the toleration side. Yeah, so mm-hmm. pro- progressive, like, hey, black people are cool. They're not really that bad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you need to kind of get along with black people. All right, and so he did it. I think we're kind of freezing tiny bit here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, black people fell for the okie doke and helped FDR clinch the presidency away from President Hoover. As history and modern day times have shown, black people were um, actually harmed by the politics of the New Deal. But that's a whole other story. We'll get into that another time. But we're st- we were still thriving because the programs that were afforded um, to everybody else or to us rather weren't that life changing. So now when I say thriving, we were still um, unifying with each other. We were still, do, you know, with each other, regardless of how bad it got. OK, so then came the civil rights movement that forced the issue of illusion of inclusion and that we would be better off being around white people. Now, by no means am I trying to disrespect the civil rights movement because it served its purpose at the time. Unfortunately, we as black people neglected to stay together in every way, shape and form. Are we freezing here? Mm-mm. Okay, so now for the lack of, for the sake of time, let's focus on politics. Since FDR and the um, civil rights movements, black people have overwhelmingly voted Democrat. Okay, that's just a fact. Black people were ebullient. Oh, I'm sorry, um, I skipped the past. And since doing so, we have not made any major strides. In fact, things have gotten worse. In 2008, America elected its first black president. Barack Obama. Okay. Black people were ebullient because for sure we thought we were going to see something tangible. Did you? Did you think as being a black president, we were going to see some tangible stuff? No, because I knew why he was put there. So not for me. I I, I knew what was going on. Okay. And so like when I say tangible, I mean stuff that we can touch. We right. can say, oh, wow. For us specifically. Yeah. We got a check. Or, you know, just to keep it real, that 40 acres and a mule came to fruition for a lack of better words. Okay. So we didn't see any tangibles. Okay, four years later, we helped reelect President Obama because we thought surely this time we were going to see something tangible. Did we? Not a thing. We didn't. All right. Now, in 2019, we have seen two black senators announce that they are running for the presidency of the United States. One being uh, Senator Kamala Harris of California and the other one being Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. Over the past couple of weeks, many in the black community have been taking Kamala Harris to task because a lot of her policies, while she served as district attorney for um, uh, San Francisco and the attorney general for California, were harmful to black people. Now, we went over all that last week and we'll get into it a little bit of it today, too. But I want to kind of keep that short for a little bit. Um, So they were harmful to black people. However, there is a conglomerate of black people who feel that we should vote for her simply because she is one of us. Okay, that's the, the sentiment among some people. Um, so we're diligently trying to get the word out that she does not deserve the black vote simply because she is black. Because remember, let's be honest, we huh. fell for that last time with Obama. And I'm one of them. I admit I voted for him, especially the first time because he was black. And then the second time, because, you know, I liked Obama over, you know, uh, who was it? Mitt Romney or whatever the case. OK. And so. Uh, In fact, she doesn't deserve it at all because she has actually been an enemy of black people. Now, maybe I don't know. I can't speak for her because I don't know Kamala, but I'm not saying she purposely did it. But let's just say inadvertently by way of her politics and policies, she has harmed black people. Okay. now uh, let's see. Okay, and then there's Senator Cory Booker. Again, it's assumed because he is one of us, he deserves our votes. Between Cory and Kamala, it is fair to say that he has been there for the community for which he serves in New Jersey. I don't think anybody will dispute that. that. Cory has been there, okay? However, Cory is an establishment established <coughs> Democrat in that he is um, backed and financed by big pharmaceutical companies to the point of him being, um, I mean, voting against making drugs cheaper in the U.S., for um, American citizens to purchase. And so um, let's keep it real here. What group of Americans are the most unhealthiest? Black. Okay. What group of Americans um, are considered to be the poorest? Black. All right. So what group of Americans are potentially harmed by having to pay for expensive medication? It's us. Now, some people say, well, you know, there's Medi-Cal and they get this free stuff, but there's a lot of working poor people who do not qualify for those programs. Mm -hmm. And so that harms those people. Okay. 
Now, Corey is also a well-known benefactor of Wall Street. In fact, he is known as the bridge, and that's what people call him, the bridge between Wall Street and the Democrats. During um, Obama's 2012 campaign, he admonished Obama for being too hard on Wall Wall Street. Street. Corey also defended Governor Mitt Romney, uh, because that's who he was running against at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and his company, Bain Capital, so it's uh, Mitt Romney's company, Bain Capital, when Romney said he created a th- over 100,000 jobs, but it was deemed to be a lie. Corey stated that the attacks against Romney were, quote unquote, ridiculous and nauseating. <laughs> it is also believed that Cory Booker defended Romney against Obama because he wanted to stay in the good graces of Wall Street so they would help um, him fund his nationwide campaign to become senator. Now... Back to Wall Street. Does anyone know what happened during the mortgage crisis of 2008? Okay. Well, during the uh, mortgage crisis of 2008, that's when the um, recession, the greatest one since the Great Depression took place. Uh, we're frozen. I'll keep going. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so the... Uh, the sub... Uh, blah, 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 blah. The mortgage crisis of 2008 happened because of subprime mortgages which were linked to... The stock market. So mortgages were linked to the stock market. And what happened was when people uh, defaulted on their mortgage, then Wall Street was directly affected because, again, those um, stocks were uh, backed by the mortgage company. Okay, and so what um, group of Americans were targeted and disproportionately sold subprime mortgages? What? Black people. Okay. Uh, What else do I have here? Do you think that is something that President uh, Cory Booker would have and should have known? Of of course. So, but so, so he's linked to, I mean, it's no secret that he is like Wall Street's guy. He is the go to. um, A lot of his um, campaign funding came from Wall Street. In fact, he even helped um, a lot of Wall Street companies, if you will. Transition from the Obama campaign to Mitt Romney's campaign. They started to back Mitt Romney Mm -hmm. um, due to the help of Cory Booker. Okay. And so, um, does he deserve the black vote? I mean, I don't know. Just on those two things alone, I think that's a good question. Does Cory Booker deserve the black vote? In closing, black people in 2019 are starting to wake up because we are not falling for the banana in the tailpipe anymore. We are not simply voting for candidates because they are one of us anymore. We are demanding that they specifically and unapologetically create a black agenda that will follow, that they will follow through on to get our vote. Brother Tariq Nasheed has, um, if you guys don't know who he is, he's mm-hmm. the brother that made the Hidden Color series and he's on YouTube and all over really um, touting the causes of black people. And I promise I'm going to get to every one of you guys' comments. Um, so Tariq Nasheed has fashioned a campaign called Tangibles, a hashtag Tangibles 2020 that states that we want something real in exchange for our votes for any candidate looking to benefit from us as yes. black people. Now, Dr. Claude Anderson has asked us to start using um, hashtag us too that states that we need to get what belongs to us too by way of reparations. Anybody who's ever followed Dr. Claude Anderson um, knows that his thing um, is getting us reparations. He's rolled a lot to um, Washington because he used to work for, I think it was the Bill Clinton campaign. Um, so he knows the ins and outs and he um, he wrote a law or a legislation or something to get black people res- reparations. So he's been working on that for years, like over 30 years now. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, your girl Maxine's been doing the same thing. So yeah, right. Let's give her some. Okay, so that's his hashtag. Us too. Us too. All right. Now, lastly on the show, we talked about Night Quell for Negroes. I would like to start a <laughs> hashtag that says No Mo Night Quell for Negroes. Just kidding. Um, but let me ask you all: Do you feel the sleepiness wearing off of Black people? Absolutely. And do you feel we are waking up? Let's talk. And so, um, you guys, also let us know how we're doing here because I see that we are freezing a little bit. We're not freezing. It's it's running. Remember, okay. It's Super Bowl, so everybody's on and stuff like that. It's running. okay because I know sometimes we are fine with these things. They freeze. Okay, so let me go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, here it is down here, and, and this is new to us, you guys. So forgive me. Yeah, I can't get my comments. Ay- there you go. Oh, hold on. There, I see what's there. going on. There you go. go up. Nope. I'm sorry, you guys. We're trying to figure this out, and this is not working for your girl. Go here. Here. See? Bling right there. It's not moving. 
Not moving. Okay, but so let me go, go on my phone, and and I will. Uh, sorry, guys, uh, for what's going on here. We're just trying to simply work out the the, the glitches here. This is um, see, new. Kevin Johnson says you're coming through clearly. I see, but it, yeah, we can't get our everything sides. else is not coming up. So um, I apologize, you guys, for that. Let me see if I can get on here on my phone. Okay, so I'll I'll read the comments from here. I'm gonna try to anyway. Excuse me. It's mute. Got there it. Okay, so I'm gonna get to, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read these comments from my phone. Okay, uh, she, she's had one of those days. It's one of those days. All right, so Kevin, he says hello. I'm glad to hear y'all discuss American history. Well, you know. I think it's important that we do that because a lot of times you'll see people get on and they'll just ramble for a lack of better words and not really give a, a context of where they're getting their information. And so um, I, I think it's important. But thank you for that. And uh, Ricky, what's happening? He says, what up? Cool, dude. I just dropped in to say hi. I can't watch the show. My phone is bugging. Well, you know what? <laughs> and that Super Bowl is about to come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> nah. I, nah Ricky, are you watching the Super Bowl if you're still here? Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for dropping in. It is always a pleasure to see your beautiful face. Yes. Um, and then, uh, Kevin, you also say, I would love to hear you discuss the real civil rights movement, the ab um, abolitionist movement, and if you would discuss the Freedmen Bureau. I believe that looking at his that history... Mm -hmm. uh, let's see I believe I'm looking at that history I believe Africans in America must uh, form the African party a party that discusses uh, I mean sorry focuses on making our 12% population in America dominate the institution known as elected offices just a thought okay and so um, we are a little bit um, I see we've got going on here with uh, what do you call it yeah it's frozen over here on the on the bar yeah, there so there you guys see us okay? Yeah. Are you guys seeing us okay? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. Okay, and so you, you said see it right there. the real civil rights movement. Well, I would give me some context on what you mean as the real civil rights movement because I'm not saying there isn't one, but I only really know of um, the one that I just spoke of, the one uh, with Martin Luther King that started really with um, uh, Emmett Till and uh, the the uh, the four black girls at the bombing and things like bombing, that that really in Rosa Parks. So I know about mm -hmm. that one. So if you can enlighten us on which one you are speaking of, um, and the other ones, as a matter of fact, okay. And so Kevin, you also say Africans in America should not vote based on their belief that someone deserves a vote. Votes are earned, and absolutely, you say you are coming through clearly. Okay, so yeah. great. So yeah. and and yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, votes are uh, earned clearly, but actually, your vote is a business transaction. Right. It's a direct transaction. Right. They promise you something, you give them your vote. Right. I should get something yeah, in for return. it. Right. right. And so to that point, Kevin, you have a lot of people who, you know, well, Kamala's one of us. Corey is one of us. Mm -hmm. I've seen, literally seen people say, I don't care who it is as long as it's one of us. And I'm like, didn't we get that way from Obama? Skin folks ain't always kin folks. Yeah, but didn't that happen to us because, you know, we were voting for Obama because mm -hmm. he was one of us. And we got nothing. And we got nothing. And so, yeah, our votes should be earned. And you, uh, hey, Al, and he says, uh, Africans in America are uh, asleep if they still find it offensive that Americans, Africans in America select those that um, earn. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who just don't care. Um, and I know that Donovan has been going... Um, I want to say back and forth. <laughs> yes, I've been going back and forth. But he's been getting a lot of opposition from people who are mad and saying, you're just attacking Kamala. You're being yeah. mean. And, you know, we need well, that she deserves our vote and stuff. And he's like, well, why? What right. does she do? Right. I, I don't think that they're mad, but they're confusing me giving them the, the information, which, you know, it, it's like anything else when you don't want, uh, you know, OK, good example. If you were a, a former hoe in high school. You know what I mean? Or whatever you were doing, you don't want that to get out now that you're an adult. And that's why I kind of relate it to Cam. They're like, oh, you're airing her dirty laundry. You're hurting her. Well, no, I'm, I'm trying to give you the information, trying to say how she conducted herself in her public job and her public record is going to tell me how she's going to conduct herself as a president. Well, absolutely. But I mean, just the fact that if you give people information, they don't want it. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. I'm voting for her because she's black. I'm voting for Corey because he's black. But it's like, well, what about his policies and the mm -hmm. things um, that they 
enacted or didn't do, you know, and I will say this because there's a lot of other candidates that I have actually been seeing information. I just didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of research Mm -hmm. on them. But it's funny how I've seen. And listen, I'm not saying they're sincere. You know, politician is a politician. But Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of uh, candidates who aren't black come out and just say it. Straight Black out. people have reparations. Yes. The only uh, person that's been talking about that other than AOC, well, she, and her reputation is yeah. different. It's totally different. Yeah, but she's throwing the everybody else yeah. in there too, though. But um, is um, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren and Marianne Williamson, who's right. a new um, woman Warren. that I heard mm-hmm. about, and I saw her speech, and she was like bold with it. Yeah. She, she had it all it. down, you know, like mm-hmm. black people have been disenfranchised and dollars. slavery and mm-hmm. it's time that black people get their money. But I mean, she was just like, wh- I watched it and my mouth was wide open because somebody <laughs> sent it to me. Uh-huh. Oh, I don't see him on here, but he sent it to me mm-hmm. and I uh, wrote him back and said, yo, is this real? Mm-hmm. And he says it's real. He she, I guess she was on Good Morning America or something. And but, so he but said notice to, how the, the news buries that. They the news is buried it. by that. Mm-hmm. But the point that I'm making is, is, isn't it funny or is it, maybe it's not, that the candidates who should be speaking openly and unapologetically about reparations aren't doing it. It's like, you know, um, Corey and Kamala won't talk about it at all. And both of their um, kickoff speeches, they're talking about us Everybody. together. And, like, as a matter of fact, I wrote it here. Let me okay. see that. Mm-hmm. This was uh, Corey's uh, campaign message, I guess. It wasn't that long. Mm -hmm. But he says, I believe that we can build a country where no one is forgotten. One, no one is left behind where parents can put food on the table, where there are good paying jobs with good benefits in every neighborhood, where our criminal justice system keeps us safe. Instead of shuffling more children into cages and coffins, we... Um, Where we see the faces of our leaders on television and feel pride, not ashamed. It is not a matter of can we, it's a matter of do we have the collective will, the American will. I believe we do. Together we will channel our uh, common pain back into common purposes. Now, like, I know how to write speeches for campaigns and stuff because I've done it before. And so, to me, there was so much left to be desired in his speech. Like he said, the kids in cages, we knew who he was talking about, but he said in coffins. So it's like, are you talking about black children who are often murdered by the police? I mean, that was very ambiguous. Who are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Because if it was me, I would have said, you know, and um, we need to figure out how to stop the wholesale murder of black people, especially black children by the police instead of, you know, so they don't go in coffins. But he kind of tiptoed around that. And so nothing in his speech or his campaign kickoff message says that he's unapologetically black. Nothing in his campaign message says that he is going to go after the uh, or, or go promote a black agenda. Nothing. And the Kamala either. Kamala won't even say she's black. And so the, the part that I love, and I'm going to get to you guys' comments after this, is that black people on the other side of the people are like, we just need to vote for them because they one of us. The other people are saying, no way. We're not voting, this time. Not this time. We're not voting time. for people who are going to um, uh, go to Washington with a black agenda. We are going to vote for those. And so be I, it a Republican, be it a Democrat, be, be it a communist. We don't whether care. Whether they're white, right. they're, whoever it is, whoever is sincerely going to Washington with a black agenda. Tangible tangibles that's who should that's who should get the black vote mm-hmm. and so i'm I, it does me great joy because i do see black people starting to wake in um as i said uh, on our show on tuesday to me i envision if you guys have all seen the whiz at the <laughs> end of the whiz um the black version not the wizard of oz the, yeah, uh, the black version when they killed um Eveline. And then the black uh, people who work for her, they're coming out of the cl- their ugly clothes. And then the music, um, a brand new, yes, yes, brand- <laughs> a brand new day comes on and they're dancing and singing. To me, that's what I see. Right. Because, like you said, black people aren't falling for the okie doke anymore. Not this time. I mean, you know, the, the people were just, you know, we want tangibles. It, right. It, why do, do these politicians address Asian group, the Hispanic group. I mean, specifically, they say, this is what we're going to do for you when it comes to us. Oh, wait, I, I got to represent everybody. I'm sorry. I, I got to represent. And everybody. to your point of your girl, AOC, Alexandria yeah. Cortez or, mm-hmm. or, or Rose. I, yeah. I'm a jack her name. Yeah, AOC. Oh, AOC. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, she mentioned reparations. 
but she threw Puerto Ricans yeah. and, 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 um, she put it in and, 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 and uh, Mexicans in there too. Right. But it's like, wait a second. The American, the re- reparations in America ain't got nothing to do with them. That has something to do with the descendants yeah. of slaves. D-O-S, D-O-S yeah. the descendant of slaves, right. So you got to watch people like her because that was a nice try. Well, you know, you got to look at what, what's going on. Here we are fighting for everybody else, getting them over here. You know, we're, we're doing it. And then the minute they get over here, I mean, think about this, everybody. And I don't mean to cut you off real quick. No, go ahead. I know you got the comments. Think about this. These people come over here from wherever they come over, and, and, and you're welcome, whatever. You know, we, don't, we don't care like that. But who sets up your economic base? We do. We let you come into our neighborhood and set up, and then you make your money. And then the minute you make your money and stuff, you're better than us. Right. We froze. Yeah. So, no, we're, we're still going to. Okay. Going. And so, we're frozen. <laughs> no, we're going. That's uh, fro- your thing is frozen. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, I, I think we're frozen. We're not frozen. Because this is this is a head. But anyway. <laughs> it's odd to me. See, yeah, oh, wait, I yeah. knew it, we were frozen. God damn it. No, no. What I think is happening is uh your your daughter might be on a certain mm. site. I doubt it. Godly. She might be on a certain site. But keep yeah, going. Yeah, because I knew these these things have issues. God. Mm. Okay. Keep going. Mm-mm. Keep going. Fuck. You you know they're hearing you, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Are you guys hearing me? Yes, the radio show. My, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. I am so sorry. Godly. God, I lost all these comments. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Did you? Because I'm not on uh, on here. So, you guys, bear with us here. We are using some new... And it, um, and it is uh, Super Sunday, so... Yeah, we're using new elect- electricity. Um, I lost my train of thought. New equipment, and so... Oh, there it is. So anyway, um, to just to keep going, we're, while we're waiting for this thing to do what it's doing, um, I want you guys uh, to check out Valentine's Day is coming up on the 14th of uh, February. Okay. Guys, don't forget to check out Shantae, Stella, and Dot Style Divas. It is on Facebook. And I'm going to tell you, uh, if you're looking for a nice little gift for the honey and the, and, and the other, that's a good, good page to go to. But um, speaking uh, real quick about the Kamala Harris thing, and, you know, yeah, you got some people. The, the one thing I can say that is happening – because of uh, the Kamala Harris and the Cory Booker and all these things that are going on is for the first time, uh, black people, we are actually talking about these candidates. And, you know, that's important to talk about them, um, you know, because they take for granted, uh, you know, our voting record. You know, um, tell me right now, Kamala Harris, when have you ever seen Kamala Harris running around with an HBCU, and she did go to Howard University, but in all my years in California, and I've looked and I've searched, even on her off-duty time, she, I, she has never worn an HBCU sweater letting people know she went to a black, predominantly college. That's a fact. Uh, when has she ever been seen in public showing her edges? She's never done that kind of stuff. But now we're supposed to believe, all of a sudden, out of the blue, you know, she's you know dancing the Cardi, a 53-year-old woman dancing the Cardi B. I mean, banana in the tailpipe, people. I mean, how many times are you going to fall for that? And all politicians dance. If you've seen the last video uh, that we did, uh, I got Obama dancing with Ellen. Um, Bernie Sanders did it. AOC has done it. I mean, it's just something that you do. But see, we are in a situation to where we have to start talking about these candidates. And I'm glad that we are uh, talking about so-called black candidates that seem to only show up or become black when they need our vote. But I want you also to guys remember this listening out there. Hillary Clinton garnered 80% of the black vote, 80% of the black vote, and she lost. Trump got almost no black vote and he won. So we really got to think about what is in our best interest and what is going to happen moving forward. We just can't keep uh, doing the same old, same old and expecting a different result. Uh, for those of that you the guys that don't know, Kamala Harris's uh, support team is mo- mostly Caucasians from the Hillary Clinton team. Now, to some of you guys, that doesn't matter. But to me, it does. How can you say you're down? You went to Howard University. You, you can't ha- hire some of your Sororos to be your communication director? And only a white communication director will think that 
by throwing her on a radio show somewhere and she's talking about, uh, can you hear me, Fife? Not knowing that Fife is dead. They're the only ones that that'll come up with that kind of stuff. Because a serious Sororo that went to a HBCU ain't going to have you up there cooning. I don't think. I mean, what, you know, D, D what, what do you think? I agree. You, you know, so, you know, what what's going on with this candidate? And when I, I particularly, Donovan Sadiq, when I point these things out, because remember, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. So if the Democrats have a, have a primary, I won't even be able to vote in that primary. Um, so when I point these things out, people get upset. I'm just saying, I think there's more to substance of uh, Kamala Harris than her dancing and quoting uh, rap from the 1990s. You know, I mean, who would agree with me? You know, I, I'm I'm vetting her off of her record. And here in California, she was hard on black people. Period. That's it. Done. You can't dispute it. You can't dispute it. And I'm not saying... You know, she can marry whoever she wants to. Did, did you know that Kamala Harris dated uh, Montel Williams? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yes, she dated a brother for a second. Well, she dated two, really, but you know what I mean? She right. dated Montel Williams, the talk show host, for, for a little bit. So he knocked that little that little thing out the box real quick and uh, moved on. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying uh, is you went to an HBCU and you can't find a, a good brother over there? Right. And then her father lost custody. She was raised in Canada. So, right. so what about these questions, you know, and being of Indian descent and, you know, these mixed Indian descent, Indian Jamaican descent, uh, that's her father comes under. He's under the Indian Jamaican descent. So he's not like a black Indian. He's, you know, or black Jamaican. He's like an Indian Jamaican, indigenous Jamaican. Right. Um, so her value system as a her experience as a black person isn't the same as somebody who is a descendant of slavery. D.O.S. Correct. So do I blame her for putting them, them Negroes and poor people in jail and single mothers in jail and keeping people in jail? No, because that's what she strived to be. Right. And that's what we have to look at. You know, so you back on you back on. Yep. We back. We back. Hold on. Let me get your stand. So uh, so so you guys be, uh, before I go real quick, Shante, Stella and Dot Style Divas. And I don't think uh, we, we froze up. Uh, the, the feds are on your ass. So. But, I, I, you know what? I'm gonna hold it. I'll just hold it. Hold it. Okay. And we're gonna be nauseated, but I'm going to hold. I stand for it. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. But um, you guys uh, check out Shante Stella and Dot Style Divas. And before we even get back into the show, since we're, we're since we're harping and carping and doing all this stuff, I want you guys to uh, think about this real quick. I, I got this uh, email or text from a friend of mine. Okay. Here it is. This is the commercial. That's a long one. No, it's not that long. Okay, hold on a second. All right, you guys. So I'm sorry. Um, we had some technical uh, difficulties here. Um, as I said earlier, we are using new equipment. Um, it's a computer. It's a, it's a Chromebook. A Chromebook. That's what it is. We're using the Chromebook. And a lot of times, um, they freeze. And so um, until further notice, yeah. yeah, we'll be back on here. you see uh, my face. And I'll pan toward Donovan here and there. I'm going to hold it today. Um, because we have um, wasted a lot of time. And so my apologies to you guys. I'll wait for you guys to get back on here. And um, what I'm going to try to do too is go back to you guys' old comments from the other feed so I can um, honor those because I saw that you guys took the time to um, to write those comments. And so I will go ahead and um, read them. So I'll give like, everybody a moment to get on hmm. here. Like I said, I, I do apologize for that. Uh, I'm unapologetic. Well, no, we no, want to apologize yeah, because, we apologize. you know, I, I, I personally like to um, operate out of a spirit of excellence. And so, absolutely, absolutely. you know, things happen. It's just one of those days. Yeah, it's one, it's one of those days. Plus, I was kind of running late. I had a million things to do. I don't want to make any excuses. But and, it, and it is raining in California. It's raining. So. We're not used to that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, let me get to you guys' comments because, as I said, I can't get to the old comments. But let me go back. Um, I want to make sure that I read you guys' comments. All right. There we go. So. Oy vey. Uh, Anybody know the score? No, Joe. No, well, nobody's <laughs> going to get the score here. All right. So here we go. Oh, my God. This is terrible. But we're going to turn lemons into lemonade here. There we okay. go. And so. Doo, doo, doo. 
Okay, so we left off with Kevin saying the one involving people that were openly known as slaves, the Frederick Douglass and Denmark Bessies. ZCR. Mm -hmm. So you're saying um, the civil rights movement back then when they were trying to um, rally for the freedom, uh, Denmark VZ trying to get, uh, he was um, not a slave. I guess he wanted his rights, and that's when you know he went to court, and they said a black man doesn't have a uh, right standing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that a white man is uh, bound to respect and all of that, and so, um, so what is it specifically that you wanted to know about that civil rights movement, Kevin? And also, you say um, Obama was like Jackie Robinson in baseball. White studied the um, white Americans and decided that the African American is going to happen. And they took over uh, the control of this election. I say somebody had mm -hmm. to be first, and that is not the same as being the best. No, absolutely. I mean, right. let's keep it real. We, I mean, how many times have we heard as black people, oh, my gosh, we're going to have a first black president. Yes. Oh, well, you know, wouldn't it be nice if, you know, because people grew up telling their, ki or ki telling their kids they're going to be a, a president one day. You're going to be the first black president. And then here we are. We get a chance to have that. And so... Um, I think, yeah, like I said, people, black people were buoyant. I'm going to because I, I had to unhook it and stuff. Yeah. So um, we were buoyant or ex excited about the fact that we're going to have a black president. And um, to your point, Kevin, it doesn't mean he was the best. Um, and so, uh, Charles, you said good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to you. I don't know if you're still on this one. And you said my point was that I cannot simply rely on some race inertia. And that means by design and a shift in the social paradigm of what it means to be Africans in America, as opposed to Europeans in America, mm -hmm. I am saying that sometimes I must uh, select based on race and sometimes I do not. No, absolutely. I mean, select based on race if it's good for us. If that person is going to go to uh, Hawaii, uh, the White House, um, unapologetically black. I mean, like, what's wrong with saying I am black I and love I'm myself. proud. Mm -hmm. I love being a black person and I love, you know, um, doing the will of my black people. Like, what's wrong with that? But you see people like your Kamala's tiptoe around the issue. She's a woman of color. But it's like, but you're doing Wakanda and, you know, dancing and stuff, but you won't say you're a black woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that's the other argument I have is like, why are we saying that she's one of us when she won't even say she's one of us? That, that confuses Correct. me. And then as black people... We are constantly caping for people who won't cape for us. I don't care who mm -hmm. it is. We constantly do that. And so, uh, let's see. Charles, you say, I tell you why they ain't talking about it is because they are coons. Uh oh, Kamala and uh, Booker coons. Every establishment mm -hmm. black Democrat is a coon ass corporate Democrat and deserves no votes. And neither do any corporate Democrat. Yes. Or progressive deserves our votes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think, too. That a lot of people are confused with what it actually means to be um, progressive. Mm -hmm. Progressive means that you're moving forward, forward mm -hmm. not stagnant. And so the Democratic Party that we've seen has been stagnant. They're, you know, still with the same ideology of, well, these Negroes should just be happy because they got civil rights. And, 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 and Kevin, I'm talking about the civil rights of the 1950s and 60s. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we gave them something 50, 60 years ago. They should be content with that. Um, question, who, mm -hmm. who was the most progressive president in the modern era? Modern, like, what do you mean? Like, Tw what, 20th what, century the forward. 20th century forward. Well, that shit, we had a lot of presidents. No, but so who, who was the most progressive? Who was the, if I had to say, mm -hmm. and then that's not me having a lot of knowledge, I would probably say Kennedy. Wrong. He wasn't in there long enough. Theodore Roosevelt, and he was a Republican. Theodore Roosevelt, and why because, did you say Theodore Roosevelt? Because a lot of things that he was doing, he remember he he busted up the corporations, which was unheard of back then. The trust buster. Okay, well now when you say progressive, I'm thinking in terms of black people. Well, yeah, no, I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, a lot of stuff that he did, he he was he invited a, a Negro to the White House. A Negro. Yes, but uh, was it uh, George uh, Booker Washington? It's, uh, Booker T. Washington. Yes. But I'm just saying that's what a progressive does. They do things that are revolution. They move forward. They move forward. I mean, yeah, no, I agree. That's that's what yeah. a progression, uh, a person who's progressive is. But we haven't been seeing progressive. Uh, not in the Democratic not Party. Not in the Democratic but they say they yes, are. So exactly. progressive. And so maybe they are progressive, but pro progressive to who? So like if you mm -hmm. look at a Kamala, 
um, and Corey, who have both been on the sides of DACA and, you know, uh, crying about the kids in cages. So, yeah, they're progressive as far as they're concerned. But are they progressive as far as their We're own concerned. people right. concerned? Look at uh, look at their records. Kamala Harris, how could you be a progressive prosecutor? You were the attorney general of California. You had the power to affect change in the legal system here in California. And you did nothing. Right. You know, so but now she's changed her mind again. She, she's backtracked and mm-hmm. saying that, OK, well, I'm sorry. I didn't have anything to do with it. it was she never does. My people. Yeah, she never does. I didn't know they were right. doing this. It's sure. like, but the buck's supposed to stop. With but you. you want to be a leader, right. but you don't know what's going on in your own, you know. Right. House. You did an investigation that exonerated Sheriff Lee Baca of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Come to find out as soon as you go to senator, he's indicted. For corruption and all and kinds of stuff. And they gave him stuff. three years. And they gave him three years. For jacking up right. the lies. And he's not in jail people. yet because he's appealing it. Right. So. And so uh, Kevin says, amen to loving one's race. Absolutely. Let's be unapologetic about who we are. Mm-hmm. And then you also say, okay, the blah, blah, blah. I'm reading all the comments. Do, do, do. And so uh, um, uh, Charles says, AOC is right. People of color and those um, who have suffered genocide, slavery, injustices, oppression should collectively fight for justice, restitution together. But all you thinking one day... Someone is going to up and campaign on some black agenda platform. Good luck on that. Well, no, what I'm saying about AOC is, you know what? Everybody wants our, what's that saying? Your mom used to say it. Everybody wants our, they want to, they, they want our blues. They want to. Uh, oh yeah. They, I, my mom just said, I read it. I, mm. Everybody wants our rhythm, but they don't want our blues. blues right. But not only that, I mean, Alexandria being a Hispanic woman is mm-hmm. like, y'all already got laws and people mm-hmm. fighting for y'all. Hell no shade to Hispanic people. Cause I, mm-hmm. one of my good friends is, uh, I'm a Latina, but it's like, yeah, most of y'all ain't even supposed to be over here <laughs> in the first place. I mean, I'm just saying legally mm-hmm. speaking, I'm not talking about morally. I'm talking about legally speaking. You're not even supposed to be here. And yet you got everybody and their mama fighting and making laws and stuff for you. So mm-hmm. Hispanic people are getting their fair share. In addition to Hispanic people have they stuff together as far as group economics and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And so here, Alexandria Cortez, whatever their ever name is, is, talking about reparations and then she slips in for uh hispanic people's like wait a goddamn minute mm-hmm. they always take over our platform what a, yeah because and that's what happens when you call yourself a minority mm-hmm. you get lumped in as dr claude anderson always talks about we when we call ourselves minorities we get lumped in with everybody else's fight and so we at some point in time was like can we get something before On everybody else starts yeah. to jump in specifically for us right and so let me get to you guys' comments on here so like I said earlier I apologize um, for the huge glitch that we had on the new equipment so we're back to my phone um, mm-hmm. for now till we figure it out okay so you guys had a lot of comments do 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 right there. all right so Samuel says greetings, greetings. the wife says test. test hi Kevin okay so I'm getting your comments hey Asada <laughs> what's happening and then Kevin says, uh, excellence means you have the desire, not the outcome. Well, absolutely. Mm. But you know what? I like a good outcome, too. That's like if I desire <laughs> to comb my hair and it comes out jacked up. It ain't excellent. Right. <laughs> Although some of my hairstyles, you guys would be like. <laughs> Boom, Quisha. Is that excellence? <laughs> right. And then he also say, Kevin, excellence means you have the... Okay, I read that. And Dwight says, it just started. He said mm-hmm. uh, he was game. a freedman <laughs> rebel. Okay. Uh, DOS, defend- defendants. Dependents of slaves. Yeah, descendants of slaves. Can I talk? Des- yes. the, I said defendants. He said defendants. I'm tripping. Descendants, descendants of, of slaves. slaves. And so Kevin says, the Plessy, uh, Plessy versus Ver- Ferguson, Denmark, Bessie did not accept being a slave, nor did he regard the threats made to him um, his or his family. He led the first slave revolt, and that Nat Turner was um, 1822, and that was 100 years after Demar V. said, yeah, so, yeah, I know about those things, but you said in, in regards to civil rights, and so is that what you're referring to, that they actually were the first ones to kick off the civil rights movement, if you will? Mm-hmm. So is that is I'm trying to get clarification on that. And then Dwight says, you love, I love Denmark V.C. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then Asada says, hey, everyone, um, Hey everyone, has anyone heard Kamala say I'm a black woman? She's I'll wait. never said it, and she's not going. She's to. never said it, and she's been asked specifically, specifically, and she says she's a woman of color. So she's telling you guys, not you guys specifically, but us. I'm not gonna just. I'm not going to claim being a black woman. President Obama, when asked recently, says that he is of mixed race. Yeah, 
yeah, so I mean, which he is, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, we know, but that's yeah. fine. But you know, if you're partially black, just say that. I'm a woman of color. That to me, that's a cop out. Like you don't want to piss off people, right? You're trying but, to play both sides. Yeah, I don't want to say I'm black. Like, what the hell is wrong with saying you black? Right. Is you right. is or is you ain't? Cost you know, your, no cost your votes, right? And so the white says Franklin Delano Roosevelt and, and LBJ, LBJ progressives, they, progressives. Yeah, they well, were you guys remember too? Yeah. FDR was progressive against his will. He yeah. didn't even want <laughs> to be wife. photographed with right. black people. Yeah, his wife kicked yeah, him. Yeah, his ass. wife was like, "No, we need to reach out to the Negroes," mm-hmm. and he did. And so that you guys uh, follow FDR know that it was said when, especially when he got sick, it was actually his wife who carried on the presidency, but mm-hmm. she was the one that said, "Nah." We need to reach out to black people. And he was like, okay, dear. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying.